In this video, we give an introduction to the Gotch model. We consider the Gotch 1 1 model given by the following. First, we have an expression for the conditional mean. Yt is a function of xt. We have a vector of parameter theta. And then we have our residual epsilon t. Next, we specify an equation for epsilon t. We have sigma t multiplied by set t, where set t is a standard normal innovation and sigma t is a scaling. Then we specify an equation for sigma t, omega plus alpha epsilon t minus 1 squared plus beta sigma t minus 1 squared. So note that the Gauge model extends the arch model simply by including the lagged sigma t square. We note that c set t is a standard normal innovation. And in order to get a positive conditional variance, we specify the parameter restriction that the constant term omega is positive and that alpha is greater than or equal to zero and likewise for beta. So note that the Gauch 1 1 model, like the arch model, model specifies first an equation for the conditional mean and second we specify an equation for the conditional variance. First note that we have made the assumption that the set t innovation is normally distributed. It is also iid so it's independent over time, mean of zero and a standard variance of one. And then we have epsilon t is equal to sigma t set t. So note that that means that we are scaling the shock set t by a factor sigma t. That implies that if we look at the conditional expectation of epsilon t squared conditional on the information set t minus 1, then we can simply plug in. So that's the conditional expectation of sigma t squared multiplied by set t squared conditional on the information set at t minus 1. Note that the information set at t minus 1 includes y1 and x1 all the way up to y t minus 1 and x t minus 1. From those we can estimate the coefficients theta. So that means that we have epsilon 1, epsilon 2 all the way up to epsilon t minus 1 included in the information set. That means that when we look at the conditional expectation of sigma t squared set t squared conditional on the information set last period, note that sigma t squared is included in the information set. So we can write this as sigma t squared multiplied by the expected value of set t squared conditional on the information set at t minus 1. As this is 1, we simply have that the conditional expectation of epsilon t squared, so that's the variance, the conditional variance of these shocks, is given by sigma t squared. So together, we have that epsilon t conditional on the information set at t minus 1 is normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a conditional variance given by sigma t squared. So we have conditional normality of epsilon t given the information set i t minus 1 with conditional variance sigma t squared. Second, like we did with the arch model, we can simply define epsilon t squared. We can decompose it into two parts. First, a conditional expectation, the expected value of epsilon t squared, conditional on the information set last period, plus vt, which is a surprise term uncorrelated with the information set at t minus 1. So we simply decompose the random variable epsilon t squared into its conditional expectation and then a surprise term that is orthogonal to the information set. Note that that allows us to write sigma t squared as epsilon t squared minus vt. So let's use that. We can simply plug that in to the equation for a sigma t squared. So we plug in and we get epsilon t squared minus vt equal to omega plus alpha epsilon t minus 1 squared plus beta. And here we plug in again epsilon t minus 1 squared 
minus vt minus 1. And that allows us to write an expression for epsilon t squared as omega plus, and now we have alpha epsilon t minus 1 squared plus beta epsilon t minus 1 squared. So that gives us a coefficient alpha plus beta epsilon t minus 1 squared. Then we have vt from here. And finally, we have minus vt minus 1 multiplied by beta. So we get minus beta vt minus 1. So note that this implies that in the Gotch 1 1 model, we have effectively specified an armor 1 1 process for the squared innovation. We can use that because we know that this process has a weakly stationary solution if alpha plus beta is smaller than 1 and it, we have already that it has to be greater than or equal to 0 so if this is the case we have a weakly stationary solution and the weakly stationary solution has the property that if we look at sigma squared which is simply the unconditional expectation of epsilon t squared we know from the properties of the ARMA11 process that that is given by the constant term omega divided by 1 minus alpha minus beta. So that's the unconditional variance of epsilon t. So note that exactly the same as the ARCH1 model, the GARCH11 model is conditionally heteroscedastic, but given that alpha plus beta is smaller than 1 and greater than or equal to 0, then it is unconditionally homoscedastic. So we have a constant unconditional variance if the stationarity condition is fulfilled, but the process is still conditionally heteroscedastic. Finally, we can look at the link between sigma t squared and the past squared residuals. So we rewrite the expression we have again for sigma t squared. So we have from before sigma t squared is equal to omega plus alpha epsilon t minus 1 squared plus beta sigma t minus 1 squared. And now we simply plug in recursively for sigma t minus 1 squared, sigma t minus 2 squared, and so on. So let's do the first step. That gives us omega plus alpha epsilon t minus 1 squared plus beta. And now we replace sigma t minus 1 squared by the recursive solution. So that is omega plus alpha epsilon t minus 2 squared plus beta sigma t minus 2 squared. Now we collect terms. First we have 1 plus beta times omega here and here. Second we have alpha epsilon t minus 1 from before this part. Now we have beta alpha or we can write it as alpha beta epsilon t minus 2 squared. And finally, we have beta squared sigma t minus 2 squared. So let's just assume that we do this infinitely back in time. Then we get the following. 1 plus beta plus beta squared plus dot 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 times omega. Then we have alpha epsilon t minus 1 squared plus alpha beta epsilon t minus 2 squared plus, and then we get alpha beta squared epsilon t minus 3 squared and so on. So we can write this as 1 plus beta plus beta 2 plus omega. And note that we can collect all these. We get a sum. We can put alpha in front. And then we have a sum i equal 1 to infinity. And we have beta to the power of i minus 1 multiplied by epsilon t minus i squared. Now from this we can see that sigma t squared has an infinite memory in terms of epsilon t squared. So all the past epsilon t squared matter. So the conditional variance at time t is simply a function of all the past squared residuals. And note that they have, given that the stationarity condition is fulfilled, they have decaying coefficients. And this is the reason why the Gotch 1 1 model is typically much better at fitting the data compared to the Arch models. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.